Drag me, take me to the bunny ranch. People dying, kill me in the packing house. Even you have to now, win really We're recording. We're recording. Yes. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Bunny Ears Podcast. Uh, here we are. Uh, uh, actually, I don't really have a normal intro. Okay, so we have a very beautiful guest. Oh, this thank week. you. Yeah, oh, you're handsome. You're wearing shorts. I am. And, and honestly, I'm wearing really short shorts for Mac. Uh-huh. And uh, your shorts are shorter than mine. Well, I, you know, honestly, uh, no yeah, matter... You want to compare shorts? Sure, sure. Yeah, let's do this. Well, the problem is too is that uh, it doesn't matter what I wear, but it's, uh, what shorts I wear, I always will look like a toddler. I look like just <laughs> honestly. Look, you have, see, you seem like you're the, dressed like a sailor boy right I now. I have the dimensions <laughs> of a toddler, and it's, so there's just no way around it. And I also too, it's like uh, I, I'm just large. I have large legs and large wrists and large head, and uh, so. The shorts are almost always tied on me, and which results in, when sitting, just big ball package. It's all belly <laughs> and balls when I'm sitting, which is why it's been unfortunate that I've been not behind a desk for all these years on television, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then like the skinny guy's been behind the very uh, you know flattering desk, <laughs> the desk that does you so many favors. So <laughs> actually, I shot, I shot some video. For a, like a political thing, it was like a oh, it was like a. It was funny. It was for it was at the holiday times, and it was teaching people how to use the parental lock on their parents' TV to block Fox News, <laughs> like without their knowledge, yeah, so yeah, that they could, nice. just couldn't get Fox <laughs> News. And I played the dad, and they were doing one shot of me in a lounge chair, and I could see them whispering behind the camera. And then they were like, well, do you want to shift your... And I was like, look, if you're talking about my, my balls, balls <laughs> there's no hiding them. It just... Sorry. So you're yeah, that yeah, guy? Yeah. Yeah. They, everybody, they've, everybody's seen them. Just, you know. The outline yeah, of them, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, there's just nowhere for them to go. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Andy Richter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. If you couldn't tell by now. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Balls, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He shops at Medium and Balls. I do. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Shop at Big Baskets. <laughs> so welcome. Actually, we got uh, um, strangely introduced. Yeah. Because I, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just actually just got a bird. It was my birthday present. My lady, she's kind of scared of birds, and uh, you know, I've been wanting a bird for about like a decade now. Oh, and really? um, yeah, no, she got me a bird. That's a nice gesture too. That she's overcoming a fear of hers. Yes. As a gift to you. Exactly. That's nice. Oh, believe me, it was it was hell for her to go to the bird store. I just yeah, all yeah. the no, all the noise it's was a noisy, really got place. Yeah. No, she turned around to one of the uh, birds and she was like, "Oh, hello there!" And the bird went, "Oh, hello there!" And it it creeped her out. She would have ran out. Kicking and screaming. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing about that place too is that there are some birds there that you know, like you can hear the cigarette smoking old woman that is their owner. Yeah. Like, hi, honey. Hi, hi, hi honey. Yeah. Like getting a uh, Lucille Ball. Yeah. You know, oh dear. You, know, <laughs> uh, you can hear it in their voice. Don't. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And then there's other there's other times that you go there, like because I, well, well you readers, listeners, you'll find out what, why we talking about birds there are other times when i've been there and the owner of that bird store was like i will not sell cockatoos and she was boarding a cockatoo once and every 30 seconds it was like a woman was being murdered <laughs> yes. a scream yes. literally like a woman and it sounded like some a woman just screaming for in terror for her life every 30 seconds she just everyone that worked at the store just had this like zombie look on their face. Which is hilarious because that store is noisy. It's very noisy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yes. mean, just, you have to really speak up if yes. you want to be, like, talk, you know, right, kind right. of thing. Like, yeah, there's, yeah, there's not a quiet corner in that That's in that right. whole joint. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, so, yeah, it's a, um, a blue-headed Pionis. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, actually, one of the things I like about the breed is that, yes, they're not really, like, huge talkers or screechers. And they're mm -hmm. actually relatively solitary birds, which yeah. is good. So, you know, so he's happy being alone, at least a little bit. He isn't bird friends. Yes. You know, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, we did all that. And then um, the lady uh, uh, let me know that you were the previous owner. I was. Yeah. 
And you, did you name him? I named him Nacho. Yeah, uh, we got him because we were. My son wanted. We were going to get a dog. Mm-hmm. My son was. <laughs> I mean, my son was probably six or seven at the time, and he would know exactly because he has an amazing capacity for dates. Whenever I need to know, like. What, what's the first year we went to Kauai? He knows exactly. He knows the month. Uh, I, thought, and, I, yeah. thought, I thought you meant dates as like dried fruit. No, no, no. no. Well, and, amazing and, capacity for dates. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, you know, days. <laughs> but uh, he wanted a dog, and then we just figured out he was just like way too allergic. We tried to expose him to like oh. even like the supposedly hypoallergenic ones. He just, there was no way it was Gotcha. Happen. So he started to like birds, and I always like birds. For me, the... I've worked with a lot of birds in comedy bits in, oh, really? on the Conan show. Yeah, we do. Like there was one, there was one bit where I had to have a giant red macaw on my shoulder. Oh boy! And his name was Rocky, and so I worked, you know, for a couple hours with this big bird, Rocky, and he was just so cool yeah. and smart. And then one day we were walking around uh, down in Tribeca, maybe even below Tribeca. And here's this bird store, and I went in, and it's the lady that I'd been shooting with. This is a few weeks later. Oh, and she goes, and I'm like, and she goes like, "Well, Rocky's here. Come on, let's go back and say hi." And th- we go to this sort of fake tree in the store, and there's about four macaws on it, and he's with has his back to us, and she goes, "Hey, Rocky, look who's here!" And w- like a fucking coolest move ever, instead of turning his head. He flips backwards upside down. <laughs> so he's hanging upside down from the stem. Like, and then hey, looks Andy. at me and is like, oh, hey, hi. You know? <laughs> and then like put a claw, like, yeah, like, yeah, like to, yeah, 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 come, yeah. Come pick, and take pick me up. Yeah. And macaws are terrifying. They are, man. They're, they're, they're huge. It's like a hawk. Yo, it's they, like, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was like sort of a form, like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. But that's very rare. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, it's also a, a handled, trained yes, bird exactly. at that yeah, point. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's a showbiz bird. Yes, yeah, precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that bird had his equity card. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but that was, so my son wanted a bird, and we so we got Nacho uh, mm-hmm. one Christmas. Did you name him, or did he name him? I think we did together. I think that we did. I think yeah. that, yeah. Um, Nothing brings a family together like naming a bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly. I think we kind of were kicking it around on the drive home, and yep. we settled on Nacho because we wanted to. We wanted something Spanish, you know. <laughs> we course. wanted something because he's from Central America. We wanted to make sure. Oh, okay, he there you go. You know, we didn't want to call him Roger. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. Actually, I kind of always like this idea of giving like animals like. Normal names, yeah. Like, oh, this oh I do too. Janet as yeah. a cat's yeah. name yeah. is this, fantastic. This is Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. This yeah. is Larry. Yeah, exactly. my, my Pomeranian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lawrence for short. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, no. But I, I end up naming all my animals. They, I feel like a five year old. Like my my fish behind you, his name is Cinnamon. Mm-hmm. Uh, our cat's name is Apples. <laughs> our other cat's name is Dude. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> like, you know it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have a dog named Panda. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. It, we feel like five year olds when we name yes, him. Yes, exactly. Well, well, you know. Yeah. So yeah, no, he's got Nacho. Oh, we've been calling him Macho lately. Yeah. Because she keeps on saying Macho, Nacho Man, uh-huh. and it's kind of like yeah. So Macho's kind of been sticking, but yes, yes. At the same he time, won't, I bet he won't be able to tell a difference. He doesn't. He can't. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. If we're gonna change the names, might as yeah. well be something. Right. You know, relatively the same. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So well, yeah. the reason that I had to give him up is because uh, my wife and I are getting a divorce. Congratulations! In the no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fall for that. <laughs> uh, but it just. It was. It just. He really became my bird, and I, I kind of was the one that handled him and took care of him. And my son was leaving for college, and he was sort of the other one that could kind of handle him. So, and I moved into an apartment, and I'm not home, so I just didn't want to. I would rather he go with another family than than be stuck in an apartment for ten hours a day all by himself. Yeah, and yeah. also he would, I, knowing him, he would have screeched. Yeah, and I can't do that in an apartment building. So yeah. I'm, I'm really, I mean, I'm your hands very are tied. Gra- I know I'm your very bird gra- hands I'm are tied. Grateful to you, grateful oh, to you oh, for, cool. for giving him a good home. Well, how long did I'm you thankful. have him for? About ten years. Yeah, because he's twelve now. Is he twelve? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what Kim was saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's on his. Yeah, it's, there's a birth date on the little on thing the, on him. Uh, yeah. yeah, that I little. He was ten. I didn't realize he was twelve. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she, she, yeah, yeah. Give or take. Right. Exactly. Give, give or take a year yeah, or two. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, that's what she was saying. It's about twelve. Yeah, because there is a metal band around that what, that tells you where he was born. Oh. I mean, there's some code for the number. It's some 
a tropical bird farm, which, man, I'd love to go visit that. I know, you right? Know, like a farm that just raises <laughs> parrots. I know. I, I've, I've talked about this before, uh, about how in my like later life, I want to like breed an animal. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. And I want to breed. Like I'm, I think I'm going to be a cat breeder at like, uh, the end of my life. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be that person. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm going to be the person who's like, get a hold of me. Like, you know, right. you know Broadway cats. Yeah. You know, come, I come, smell come urine. get a Here cat. comes Mac. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think that's how I'm going to spend my twilight years. <laughs> yeah. It's like, after all the kids are off at college, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, yeah no, I'm going to smell like cat pee from well, now on. You I, know? I, have, oh, I actually just got a dog myself. I got a rescue dog just a couple weeks ago. And I really do feel like I would have, I'm, at some point there will be a menagerie. There will be yeah. goats and chickens and I mean, just depending you know, when showbiz kicks me out, then I'll start my farm. Yeah. <laughs> well, am I, in my, I'll uh, start it in Burbank, in my apartment. Yeah. Burbank farms. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I was in my late teens, we had, uh, um, at one point we actually had eight cats, but it was only because one of them had a litter of kittens. Uh-huh. Uh, we had four dogs, uh, two African gray parrots, uh, a ferret, four rabbits. It was like, yeah, like I did yeah. that. It was a full-time job. Yeah, yeah. I had the great ringworm outbreak of 1998. No shit, really? Oh, boy. On you or just on the no, animals? Oh, no, on the animals kind oh, of thing. And so yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like go feed the dogs, spend time with them, then take a hot shower, and then go feed the cats, hang out with them, go take a hot shower, oh then go handle the ferret and take a hot shower. Yeah, it was like, yeah. it became a full-time job. So needless to say, like, yeah, it was, um, I, I, that that changed. But now we got, we got two cats, a dog. Uh, I have three fish tanks. Yeah. Uh, with a... Like, Probably nearly about twenty fish in them, um, wow. and then we got the bird yeah. looking at look. It's but also I really enjoy it. It's one of those things when I was talking to uh, Kim, the lady who owns the uh, the, uh, the the bird store. Um, it was like yeah, like my lady, she gardens, like you know, she likes to do that. Like I, I like tending to my fish. Like I enjoy my morning ritual yeah, yeah, of feeding, exactly. feeding the fish, feeding them, cleaning and then them. you know, yeah. like put, putting you know macho nacho on his on his perch. Yeah. you know, like changing his water out and stuff like that. Like it's like I'm in a very good place in my life where I yes, I can do that. Yeah. Like, I'm a 39 year old semi retired person essentially <laughs> is what it is. Like it's not a bad life. Believe you me, I know. I mean, listen, I made plenty of sacrifices when I was 10. Yeah, listen, I had yeah, to work yeah. with Donald Trump. All right. Right. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, lots of sacrifices. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. But at the same time, it's led me to like a very like a place where I can kind of do this. Like, yeah, yeah it's great. it's nice. Like, yeah, that's why. I would, like, I feel like I'm in a very settled place. Where it's like, yes, I can have a a bird. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And they really, there is like, I mean, I'm just finding from having this new dog in my life, uh, there is. I I'm loath to use the word spiritual because I don't even know what the fuck that means. No, but it's, there it's, is yeah, there's but there is something like really that bonding. Profound, well, there's just like something profoundly satisfying that that satisfies you on a level beyond you know everyday concerns where yeah. you are like making some kind of relationship and you feel like a place and you feel a purpose. There's a partnership a and a nurturing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How old is the dog? Um, the, my vet thinks about a year old. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like a little pup. No, it wasn't. We went to get a little pup and then the rescue place wanted to see my lease and I wouldn't even, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I well, you know how they are. These rescue places in LA, I was surprised how easy it was. Cause some of these places, let me see your papers. Yeah. They, well, they want to come to your fucking house. Jesus. And, like that. Yeah. And like, they want to look at the perimeter to make sure your dog can't get out of a fence. It's like. Come on, this thing was eating trash and you know, <laughs> up in Chatsworth. Just, it's, uh, it'll be fine. With me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this place, I mean, we've had that before with because we've rescued dogs before. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, family, yeah. But um, I was they they just they can't they can't let you take one of their dogs if you're, you live in a place that says you can't have pit bulls. And these puppies were a pit bull mix. Oh, gotcha. Um, which I wasn't crazy about anyway, because my what, dog... What are, they, what are they called? Sheffield Terriers now or something Oh, like that? American Staffordshire. Staffordshire. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. It's the yeah. same thing, but it's, yeah, it's just a euphemism. But I actually am not that crazy about pit bulls, and I know they have a lot of advocates, and, and I've known and met some really cool, friendly, lovely dogs. I had, a, I had a pit bull for a couple of years. My daughter got bit in the face when she was four years old, yeah. and it tends to form your opinions oh, of gosh. them. And it was a it was an unprovoked attack from a dog that I had already been playing with. 
Yeah. And um, two girls in my school in middle school were both came back one summer with one had actually had like a chunk of their cheek yeah, gone, and the other one yeah. had a scar down her lip. And, and yeah. I, you know, and, and then both the, pipples. People told me, started to tell me stories, and I, you know, like it, I just was having this discussion with somebody because this whole dog discussion was again up. And who was saying like, oh, that's just anecdotal evidence, which I was like, well, yeah, that's kind of what all evidence is. It's, <laughs> it's a collection of anecdotes. And I heard a lot of anecdotes that made me think. And I also think, and like I say, I understand people that are advocates for it. I understand loving this breed. But I also think it's, it's disingenuous to say golden retrievers are good swimmers. They've been bred that way. Mm-hmm. And everyone goes, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And and but if you say pit bulls are aggressive because they were yeah. bre- bred that way, people go, oh no 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 no, it's no, no. only bad owners. Yeah, yeah, which that's, is like that just is. It it, there's a make weird, any there's sense. a there's a weird like me too movement about pit bulls yeah, kind of thing. Well, it's, <laughs> it's just like, a yeah. disconnect from reality because yeah. you don't want and. And I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I haven't, yeah. I haven't no, checked and listen, records. I, 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 I had a pit bull for a couple of years. Yeah. It was all white and named him Baby yeah, to soften yeah. up his name. You know, right, yeah, right, kinda, right. Yeah. And uh, you know what? He was completely nice. Can't see it happen. Also, I had a bulldog that was like a super sweet, all that kind of stuff. She went through her first heat and she freaking... She actually made someone's nose bleed. Actually, like yeah. bit their nose. It like, came yeah, out yeah. of freaking nowhere. And actually, they're kind of bred the same way. They're actually, they're they're bulldogs. Yes, they're, exactly. they're literally meant to, to tear down bulls. Yeah. Yes, to hold onto a bull's nose yeah. and not yeah, let yeah. go. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, something like that. Like yeah, it's kind of like yeah, you're right. Like yeah. something's bred to swim. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, but well, so I couldn't get these one of these puppies, which I was actually kind of relieved because they were they were these pit mix puppies that my daughter had found. I, when I told her, we're why get is a dog, like fifty percent of freaking uh, rescue dogs are pit or half pit bull? Because that's <laughs> just what's I out think because I think people just let their pit bulls go. Well, and, it's like and, the alligator in the sewer and kind of thing. Also, they're also uh, irresponsibly bred by people. Yeah. Yep. That then just dump them because I do think there's a lot. Well, there's, you know, there's a macho attachment to them. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I know, but like when you go to LA shelters, which I've been to, it's pit bulls and chihuahuas. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just pit bulls and chihuahuas exactly. over and over and over again. Yeah. And that's, and just what, because have that's we ever what's seen, popular. have we ever seen them breed? Have we ever seen gotten like a chihuahua <laughs> pit bull? I mean, yeah, I, you know, I think, I think definitely the, the pit bull would have to be the yes. female. Yes. Well, we have, we have a little a little tiny chihuahua. I can show you a picture of him, but you podcast people can't see it. Um, he's a little tiny chihuahua, but he's like a little fatty with a woolly coat. And we did a DNA test for him, and he they say he's one twelfth Saint Bernard. <laughs> which I was like, okay, it's the like Saint the Bernard biggest. must have been the female. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like it's like two like percent horse. I, it was yeah. yeah, but it was like it was like. Minpin and Chihuahua and like uh, I don't know Shih Tzu you know. whatever yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then and one twelfth Saint Bernard <laughs> which I, I you know I mean I don't disbelieve because he has like a coat yeah you yeah know, you can pet him like I, like I said you can he's a nine pound dog and but he's can, got he's got a thick you coat can brush seven pounds of fur out yeah and, you know, yeah, just, yeah and it just keeps coming yeah know? it's like my uh, my cat apples like there's a big white thing and yeah. but look it just he's a big fat fluffy white cat i mean he's yeah. he's perfect he's the perfect cat right right perfect demeanor and all that stuff yeah. and there's like the lady she loves it yeah she sits there and she watches this uh, pottery wars or something like that show <laughs> and she knits and just brushes the cat all day yeah. and you see the pile of fur it's yeah. as big as the cat yeah. Kind of thing. yeah and she'll do it once a week too yeah. like it's just like it's amazing like yeah, yeah these long-haired cats yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, does she make yarn then out of the hair she should. Oh, you yeah. know what? Let me make a note of yeah, that. Yeah, come you know? on. <laughs> Spin it. You know? I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah might as my, well. My dad had a Russian friend who gave him, uh, he visited Russia frequently for his job. He was a teacher of Russian, or, it, you know, was, yeah. Oh, Privet, Privet. Uh, I don't know it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <yatibla, libla. laughs> But he, uh, a friend of his in Russia gave him a pair of socks made from uh, Newfoundland fur. Like this guy brushed his Newfoundland and his mom made yarn out of the fur. And he said they were like it's the itchiest, gonna... most awful <laughs> things he's ever put it's on a, his feet. That's amazing and gross. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he said like, and of course, because he, he was like, oh, I'm going to put them on right now. And he said, and of course, when you take them off, it's just dog. You yes. just smell like wet dog. You know? <laughs> 
So yeah. So so, so what you're saying is that we should actually my lady to mix. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'll, you I'll can find, have a whole series, whole series of, of I'll, cat accessories. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll find I'll find my my friends that are allergic to cat and kind of like oh look here's a baby blanket there you go there you, there you go like this. <laughs> hope you like hives <laughs> in your face yeah allergic person yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. So I got a I got a new dog. It's a year old. It's a border collie mix, and she's really sweet. Border collies are smart as fuck, yeah. man. Like, and she's know. something else too, like Labrador or something. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but, but still, uh, those are two absolutely. sharp breeds. Oh, absolutely. She's very smart and very, but also super gentle. I didn't believe that she was as young as she was. My vet thinks she's about a year old. Um, they tell by the teeth. That's pretty much what it yeah, is. Yeah, she Look has good. really beautiful, clean, perfect teeth. Oh, also, yeah. she was she was a stray. Uh, in Bakersfield, okay, and she was came not, all the way down here in LA. Oh, well, they do that. There's <laughs> like this place, ju- this rescue place, just has dogs from Kern County because there's so many strays there and not enough people. To, oh wow! So they just transfer. They just oh, bring wow. them like Jeez, where it's like south. it's capitalism and marketing. It's like yeah, <laughs> where's the demand and where's the supply? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's ne'er do wells like me looking for a you know <laughs> yeah. something to love me. Just see, yeah, exactly. I'm getting a divorce. I need yeah, something yeah. to love need me. Something to love me. <laughs> need something to lick my face. Yeah. Something that's been bred to love me <laughs> unquestioningly. <laughs> oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, um, yeah. We're gonna take a break uh, right now. We usually do a commercial break in about twenty minutes, so we're about about the twenty minute mark. All right, I know. Look at us. Um, uh, you know, if it depends on what market you're in, either you're gonna get an ad or you're not. But also, I might do an ad read this time because we have a new sponsor. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Masturbation Minute. I'm your guide, Louis Prada. During these stressful times that we live in, it's more important than ever to masturbate daily. It's only when we masturbate that we are able to mend the fractures in our hearts and minds. Being able to show each and every one of you how to masturbate is truly one of... What? What was that, Rebecca? Say it again. Masturbate? No thank you, Rebecca. This is a professional podcasting environment, Rebecca. You're lucky I don't report you to HR with that filth. Thin ice, Rebecca. Thin ice. Gah. Ugh. I'm, uh, I'm offended. I'm disgusted. And I don't know about you, listener, but I'm ready to return to my breathing. Because as Rebecca just helped us demonstrate, you shouldn't let anything distract you from masturbating. You know what? I hear it now. I hear it now. Yeah, but I think it's your fault, Rebecca. You planted it in my head, and now get out. Get out. You're in timeout. Leave the studio, please. You're implanting filth in my brain, and it's implanting filth thoughts in the minds of my meditators. Please leave. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. I, and I literally can't hear it. That soundproof glass, and I took off my headphones. I can't hear you. Just get out. Cool your jets, cool your privates, and get out. Thank you. Close the door. Thank you. I mean, the gall of my producer to bring up masturbation during a recording session. Ugh, where does she get off? Not in here, I'll tell you that much. Not in this studio. That would be a violation, I think. Some kind of health code. Some people just have sex on the brain all the time. Anyway, I hope this mutual masturbation has brought you the serenity you seek. My name is Louis Penis, and this has been Masturbation Minute. Namaste. And we're, and we're back. All right. All right. And uh, uh, now Macho, Macho Nacho Man yes. is on your shoulder, actually, as we speak. He's you know, sitting, uh, yeah, it, it's his, it, it was, well, it used to be his favorite spot. <laughs> no, I'm ha- like I say, I'm happy. I had 10 years with him, and that's. That was enough, because I, I just didn't feel like, I mean, I no, I really do, I don't know, I would be just worried about him having a quality life sitting in an apartment by himself, yeah, which is what yeah. he kind of would be doing. So, it's cl- I'm glad that he's here, and you know. He's in a loving family. It's, yeah, It's yeah. a good place. You know, That's you know? good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. He's, yeah, so he's getting acclimated. All right. So, uh, um, okay, let, let, we've been talking about animals this whole time. I know, we I, have. I know. We're, it's this, been pet talk. It's been pet 
Hey, welcome to Pet Talk. <laughs> this is NPR. Welcome to Pet Talk. Uh, um, but yeah, so uh, what, what what are you up to right now? Tell, tell me, tell me some of like what you're doing. Well, uh, besides moving to an apartment, and getting yeah, a dog. Yeah, besides, yeah, besides, uh, yeah, the divorce. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, um, that it, well, that takes up a lot of time. Um, <laughs> And it's, you know... Tell me about it. My divorce would have been so much easier without my wife, you know? (laughs) Well, yours was when you were 19, so... (laughs) You know, you you still bounce back. I don't... You know, it's when you're older, it's a little more... I mean, it is rough. It's... I don't mean to make complete light light of it, because I... No, I mean... You know, I got kids, and it's... You know, we were were married for 25 years. You're comedic. Yeah, no, I understand. You're allowed allowed to make it. Yeah, no, I know, but I just... I still am like... I have to be sensitive to it, because it's... I, it's, it's not. Fresh. It's fresh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's funny to everybody, but the people that I love. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know? no, so it, it's like I can't really make too much light. So, of so it. I can make jokes, but you can't. Right, exactly. Gotcha. To you, it's hilarious. Honestly, to me, it's, it's great. awful. It's, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, just doing the Conan show, which is kind of I like to say evanescing. Uh, because, wow. No, because well, I mean, we went we went down to a Everyone half an hour, that band. Which, is, which is actually yeah, <laughs> the uh, terrible yeah, terrible yeah. band. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we went down to a half an hour, um, which has actually been really great, and I think it's actually kind of like a better show. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, it's just kind of you know, it, it, it's more it, focused. It's more focused. There was there, you know, there's just one guest. And the way that we do the interview now, rather than in, you know, a two six minute chunks with it, where you have to kind of get a laugh line and go out and we'll be right back. It just, it can be a conversation that can be anywhere from 12 it to 20 ca- minutes. It seems more casual. Yes. Which and, is, yeah. And you don't, there's no sort of rushing to a commercial break. There's yeah. just a conversation and when it's over, it's over. And we just cut up those parts and put it on the air Without like a, and we're back, you know, we're like, back. Yeah, yeah, people, cause that's not how people watch it anymore. Anyway, they watch, they yeah. watch the clips. So yeah. it's kind of, if you're going to do a, sh- you might as the broadcast show, woo, uh, just, that was bird ruffling. If you heard that. <laughs> right, 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 um, right in his ear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you, if you, if you, you can watch the whole interview online. Or you can watch the TV version of yeah. it, and it's nice. It's just it's. I really... remember when they were experimenting with the format a little bit. There was that uh, Conan hosted a bunch of the Simpsons writers. Yes, and it was one of those like black round table, like yeah, black yeah, yeah. backdrop round yeah. table. Like, well, that was yeah. That I'm was surprised a... there weren't like cigarette, like you know, smoking yeah. cigarettes. Like, all that was like a, a special side. It was a special thing. Yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Well, I could tell, but it was also I think they were experimenting with the format. I yes. think they were already talking about the change. Yeah, know, and mm-hmm. they well, yeah, and he's done. He's He's done kind of long form. I, I can't. There, there was a name for him, like deep dive or something like that. And it's, I'm a terrible employee for not remembering. But he did Define. a couple of like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, like just more sort of serious, <laughs> serious interviews that were online with you know like historians and things like that. Yeah, yeah, stuff that that kind he's of, kind really of into. Comedic Charlie Rose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it kind of felt like. Um, yeah, yeah, but but yeah, no. This half hour, we kind of just you know we're basically missing. The second guest and a musical act. We still have a stand up every now and then, not as much as we used to. Mm-hmm. But it just it's a more concentrated show and it frankly not to be a dick, but it's that was the parts people were watching anyway. Yeah, yeah. They were watching the comedy act, they were watching the first guest. Yeah. And they were watching stand ups. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's really yeah. it's a tragic it's, thing. It's very, but very rare where I actually to watch the musical guest. Yeah, the mu- music. I did Brooks on- and, like I, one time I was like on the show, I was like, Brooks and Dunn. I was like, Oh yeah, uh, who? What? Yeah, huh? yeah. And yeah. I was like, No, they like apparently they're huge. Well, <laughs> and that's the that's the thing about music on TV is it's you know, you're either into them or you're not. And yeah. and throughout throughout the history of the show, that act is always a tune away act. Like you just, yeah. the numbers just drop and that's the same on any but show. That's the reason why they put it at the end. Too. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. Unless, unless there's like some gigantic, like the Bruce Springsteen peak. and yeah, yeah. you know, the, the, the freaking white stripes. Yes. With yeah. Yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then when you weren't around people. Yeah. When I wasn't around, <laughs> he needed friends then he didn't have me to really, you know, <laughs> to so, butter yeah. him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack White was your replacement. Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah. We're very similar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
But uh, geniuses, musical yeah. geniuses, musical geniuses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, don't need bass players. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's the perfect yeah, one. Yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. that's the Andy main thing. does not need a bass yeah, player. I don't need a bass player. <laughs> But um, I'm doing that. I'm also have a podcast of my own that I started oh. uh, a little while ago called The Three Questions, uh, which is uh, it's just how many questions do you ask. I ask mm, you, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, it's the same three questions. It's where do you come from, where are you going, and what have you learned? Oh, I uh, thought I thought they were going to be the three at the end of uh, the inside of the actress. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. They're just they're what my, do you want God to say to you my, at the gates of heaven? Yeah, no, that's that's. <laughs> Whoever that was, some French guy came up with those. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, um, no, G- James Lipton, the French guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, really, it's like some French guy. No, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. but I don't know who it's, it was. It's, uh, uh, it was uh, something that the actor prepares. The guy who wrote that. Yeah. So yeah. don't yeah. 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 my my acting training was uh, like faking it. <laughs> I still am not quite sure was, how to was act. Was growing up with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like I, I've gotten in trouble for this, but like for me, acting is lying. You know, yeah. it's like it's like I'm not I'm not a basketball coach, so I have to yeah. think of like how would I convince someone if I just like was sitting next to him on a plane that I'm a basketball coach. How would I there talk and how would I act? Yeah. And I've had actors be like, no, it's about finding truth. It's like, mm, I mean, look, yes. You're not, I mean, you're look, not fucking Macbeth. Look, look you know? one, one of my brothers, like one of his approaches, because everyone has different approaches. Yeah. One, he just does impersonations of the people around him. Oh, really? That's what he does. He's like, yeah, like, hey, if he wants to play an asshole, he just plays me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, like, and you know, so he's told you yeah, that. Yeah, if he wants to play an idiot, he yeah, plays yeah. my other brother. Well, yeah, if he like, ever gets an Oscar for playing an asshole. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. You know? yeah. And uh, people take different approaches kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, no, exactly. I mean, like, uh, so, you know, like, acting sometimes, I'm very conflicted about it uh, 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 personally, but a lot of it is kind of like, I'm just tired of like wearing strangers' clothes yeah. and like wearing makeup and saying, you know, and just kind of spouting other kind of like And things. the time killing. If, if, yeah, exactly. The time killing. There's a lot of, I know a lot of people. When I, when I was a kid, man, it was easy. Yeah. Like just like, yeah, because I had to go to like to tutoring or whatever. But right. that, that time like kind of stuff, like in between yeah. setups, like that, it's a fucking killer, man. I, you got to kind of reach a kind of acceptance of it. Yeah. And, but I think as you get older and as, as you do more and more of it, see, I'm still kind of like fresh to it because I haven't just been acting. I've been doing this, this, you do comedy. This, you, yeah. You're, I do you're, this you're, talk show. Personality. I do this talk yeah, show and yeah. I've been doing this talk show kind of as my main gig. And in many ways it's hard to do acting while I'm doing this because I can't, I can't go to Vancouver you're, you're, for you're, six weeks. You're working four nights a week. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, uh, so I mean, I still do guest spots and stuff. So I'm a little bit, but I, you know, like I just shot a guest spot for a show and I, I actually played a basketball coach and the uh, way I was going to yeah. say, this sounded close to home. Yeah. Yeah. The way, <laughs> the way that it was, the way that it was shot was that it's like, there's basketball playing, and then I notice a new kid, and I'm impressed by the new kid, and I call him over. It's gym class, and I call him over and say, you should be it, on the team. Is, is, he, is he white? N- no, he's Hispanic. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. But I call, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I call him over. I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to say what, what it is because I, well, I mean, just. You don't want to give away too much. No, well, not, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I should. I don't know what their deal is with promoting things exactly or yeah, yeah. so is you don't give away the fuck yeah, yeah but yeah. so i'm a basketball coach i watch basketball i call him over i have dialogue you know you should join the team basically that's it and we did the dialogue part first and then for like five hours i was in the background of these <laughs> kids playing basketball and nobody was very good. So, it was, you know, there's like things oh. that are supposed to happen so, basketball yeah, they're, wise. they're supposed to make the basket. And yeah. you're just sitting there in the background waiting for this one fucking yeah, kid to yeah, make yeah. his fucking basket. And that's when, that's when like my age is, gets into it. Where I'm like, I'm standing here and it's hot. And I'm wearing a, you know, a, a long sleeve neck And a whistle coat. around my neck. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, come on, let's move it along. Come on, kids. kid. Make your free throw. But I did. I did a movie uh, called Semi-Pro. I did a basketball movie yeah, yeah, yeah. where I played the manager of the team. And we shot basketball for over three weeks in which I have to be courtside because I'm at the scorer's table. I'm actually like the scorer. Mm-hmm. And it was me. Andy Daly and and Will Arnett. And you're probably in every shot because you're at the scores table. Very, very many of them. And there were days where you'd have to come to work because like 
like a chef needs everything chopped, you got to be ready to go in in case Whenever. they decide we're going to turn the camera over this yep. way and we're going to see you. So there were days where I'd go in and I may, I'd be there for hours and be like, you know what? We're not going to see you. So, and you gotta, you gotta just kind of go, okay, that's, that's in the check. That's like, that's built gotcha. into the check. Gotcha. The same way that, you know, like whenever, you know, there's a big sale, it's like, it's not really a sale. It's built into the price of all the other, yeah. of yes. all the yeah, other yeah, items. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so you, but uh, I totally understand, and depending on your temperament too. It, I got really pissed off. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was treated yeah. like that once. And yeah. I, was, I got like, I didn't diva it, but yeah. I was like, yeah, it was, they kept on calling me in like, you know, like early. Yeah. And it's one of those things I'm sitting around for five or six hours in strangers' clothes, like in makeup, you know, watching a fuzzy television yeah, yeah. in a fucking banger kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And it was, uh, I eventually started giving the second AD dirty looks. Yeah. And then I eventually, like, they just said, your call's at 8 a.m. I go, no, my call's at noon. Like, yeah, that's, I was like, no, my call's at noon. Right, like, right, yeah, right. Like, that's like, uh, no matter how much I'd love to sit around your set yeah. for like six hours yeah. and not do anything, yeah. it's like, uh, like, I'm not being a diva, but also I'm not your extra. Either, you got it. Yeah, there, there I, there's is, a little bit of left and right, but it's also like, look, I'm looking at the schedule too. Yeah, and you got like, it. When you got miles on you, you start to learn. That's why like, I, my temperament's know, not yeah, for Hollywood yeah, anymore. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and I mean, and I've learned, you know, there are things that I've said no to that. I mean, not like huge things, not like sucking anybody's dick or anything, but just like, <laughs> well, but just what, like this fire fest. <laughs> <laughs> but just, but just like. But just like, oh, you you, you the second AD on Firefest? Or just different kind of choices or things that they want, like for acting wise. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it that way because that way's shitty and bogus. Yeah. And and I would never have done that earlier on. But I've, uh, you know, there's been enough time that I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. I want I don't want me doing that to be on film somewhere. Yes. Because you always know when they say. Do it this way, and it's a way that you... And I'm also, like, I trust myself. I'm not, like, some just dick. You, you it's like, weird yeah, hack. You know, I, yeah, I, yeah. Like, I, I, am, I always have... I always have the quality of the project, regardless of what it is, in mind first. Yes. And, and, and I don't... I mean, believe me, I've looked like a fucking idiot a million times. Yeah, but also, if it makes the project if look it's good... Part, yes, if it, mm -hmm. fits the, yes. if it fits the contraption, then that's... I'm going to do it. But if they want me to do something that's like, that's demeaning or humiliating, I'm just, just for the sake of doing yeah, it. Yeah, just like, like, you know, or like, uh, you know, I don't know if I've ever told this story in public, but uh, one of my first, I was on Arrested Development a number of times and. Terrible show. Don't watch it. Awful, awful <laughs> show. Terrible, terrible. No, but I, I, everybody on that show is friends of mine. And. Uh, oh, you know Jason Bateman? I do know Jason okay, Bateman. Can you tell him I say hi? I will. Okay, thanks. I mean, I I don't know when I'll see him next. Do well, you know Liza Minnelli? Uh, <laughs> do I know Liza Minnelli? I do not know Liza Minnelli. Oh damn! I, do not, I, I saw her in concert once, uh, but no, I do not know her. Um, but I uh, I knew no I because I was Weathers? on this, I what was about on Carl this, I do know Carl Weathers. Oh, I shot no. with Carl Weathers for days and days. And I'll tell you what's funny <laughs> is because Mitch Hurwitz and I I knew there's a writer on the show Jim Vallely. And, and they were, you know, they, Jim and Mitch were sort of, I don't know if they were like the main ones, but they were the guys I knew most. And I, and Will Arnett's a very good friend of mine. Yeah, and I yeah. used to go, and, and Tony Hale's you, a good friend of mine. Lego Batman? Lego Batman, voice of, <laughs> the voice of GMC Trucks. Yeah. Um, which that still fucking kills me when I hear him on GMC Trucks, because I'm like, that in and of itself is a nice life. Yes. yes you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like just being the voice of GMC trucks is all you have to do to raise you've, a family. You've made it. Have a nice place <laughs> to live. And mm -hmm. he's been doing that for 20 years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not envious. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I used to, I was on a show <laughs> called Quintuplets that I wasn't like thrilled to be on. <laughs> And I mean, it was a, I was thrilled to have the job. So you're saying it's not still on the air. Is I what should, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, I, I, I shouldn't say I wasn't thrilled to be on it. I was glad to have the work, but it wasn't, I didn't really have a lot of creative say in it. Yeah. And I didn't, so I wasn't like crazy about the material. Mm -hmm. It was, and I mean, it was, there were plenty of people that loved it. It just wasn't to my taste. Yeah. And I go over cause they were shooting. You was, know, it, was it about three, three babies? 
No. Oh, you dummy. Quintuplets. It's five kids. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> never uh, mind. Sorry. Three or triplets. I never saw the show. Oh, my Forgive God. me. <laughs> I never saw the show. Never heard of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Come on. What's that show Taxi Cab about? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but so I would go over and hang out with those guys because I was like, now this is the kind of show that is in my ballpark, like yeah. my sensibility and stuff. And I go hang out with them. And, and I got to know Mitch. And the, the problem with those guys loving you is that if they write you into something, they will make you look like an asshole. That's yeah. part of them loving you is ter- So I played quintuplets because they knew that I was like, oh, quintuplets. And, and they were like, uh, okay, hello. hey, how about you come over here and play quintuplets? <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. Ha ha, you're quintuplets oh, over here. You're a big fan. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I went over there to play quintuplets, but in like, in one of the episodes, the reason I bring it up is that one of the episodes, there was a scene where I was playing me Going to the, the, the school where Michael Sarah went and my brother, which was me, was the director of the school I and I want to see my brother or something. And I see Bateman and Bateman asks me uh, to be at a, show up at a charity thing. And, and I'm like, okay. And I say like, okay. Uh, I was like, how much money is in it? And he's like, none. It's a charity thing. I'm like, all right, well, is there a dinner? And he's like, yeah, it's a dinner. And I'm like, all right, I'll go. And then I say, like, you know, if you see my brother, tell him I'm in the cafeteria. And I did the lines like that. Like, I'm such a fucking loser that I'll show up yeah. for a hot for meal. A hot meal. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the whole point of me being me was that I was a showbiz loser. Mm-hmm. That my career was in the fucking toilet. And then I, you know. Why'd they pick you then? I, I know. I mean, why'd they pick me? The, the guy that's constantly uh, confused with Brad Pitt and Tom Hanks. Uh, yeah, Tom Brad Pitt Hanks. Yeah, yeah Tom uh, Brad Pitt Hanks. <laughs> um, but so, and you just got to put up with it. And this way, when you say Carl Weathers, yeah. the bit with Carl Weathers, and I worked with him on Make a number of days. <laughs> his, the thing with him was that everyone went, is that Cuba Gooding Jr.? Uh, and then they go, no, no, it's Carl Weathers. He's going to, and they're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> like they're all, everyone's disappointed that he's not Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. And I said to him like, how are you with that? Because it goes, it's like there's bit after bit of it. And he's like, he's like, uh, you know, well, just got to laugh. And because he's also a prince. You I was going to say one, it's funny. And two, also, he's also, it didn't seem like he was doing anything else. Either. No. Well, and, and it, also like, honestly, it's what a whole generation of people remember Carl Weathers. For. Yeah. 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 Cause it's like, Oh, take, you know, go to, ca- you know, craft service, get some, you know, get some carrots, get some celery, take that rib bone. You got yourself a stew. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, like, there you go. You got, no, you, you're gonna eat well all week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, working one day. See, and that's yeah, and it's like, and that's, that's, that's he has to is memorable, that man. And he has you have it requires a good sense of humor about yourself. Yes, yes. it requires sensibility to go be on that show, mm-hmm. and uh, especially when you're playing your fucking self. Yes, you know, yeah. Because you were playing a version of yourself. He was playing Carl yes, Weathers. He's just, no, I was playing me too. You know, oh, you were playing Andy Richter? Oh, yeah, Andy Richter and his four quintuplet brothers. Oh, you know. gosh, you're right. Yeah, Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I actually so, rewatched that show. Jeez. So, yeah, but. Um, <laughs> but they, I should rewatch the new seasons, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, watch them all. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, but in this scene. Hi, Mitch. Hi. <laughs> Hire me. In this, in this same, in this scene, you know, I was saying, "Oh, is there a meal? Okay, I'll show up and tell my brother I'm in the cafeteria." And they kept coming up to me, the director first, and then the director first, giving me notes like, "You got to really hit the, is there going to be a meal?" And, okay, I thought I was hitting it just fine, and in the and he's like, and also too, like when you're going to the cafeteria, like hit that too. I'm like, well, it's what? one of those things where it's kind of like, okay, you know, is there going to be a meal? Or is it going to you know, be a meal? No, this like, is... Yeah, I mean, how this, do you want me to hit it? Uh, this yeah. is... I finally was like... I finally... Because uh, I, 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 the director explained it to me. And I said, oh, you mean like Fatty loves to eat? Is that is that the <laughs> angle you're going for? Fatty likes his foodie like food. Fatty, fatty's so crazy <laughs> about eating that Fatty can't... Like if there's food, Fatty will do anything to get there. And that if he's going to wait for his brother, he's going to go to where the food is because he's fatty. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're looking for? And the director went, mm, well, I mean, yeah. And I, said, <laughs> and I said, no. 
Like, yeah, no, I that, said, that, no, that, I'm not going to read it no, like that. It, it, it's more kind of like, I'll do anything for a hot meal. Yeah. Like, that's the joke. Yeah. Not and it's that like, you're And fat. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to like, yeah. I just wasn't going to do that. Because mm-hmm. A, I mean, it's humiliating, but the main well, reason is humiliate- it's not fucking funny. Exactly. You can humiliate yourself if it's fucking funny. Yes. But if it's like, yeah, just for the sake of yeah. humiliating yourself, like, no. Like, what the, f- like, uh, Okay, I'll be a I'll be a a failure for you, but I'm not going to be like a food obsessed fatso. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. So and and then the like the onset writer came over and was like trying to explain it, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, no, I get no, it. I, I, Fatty I, I, loves I, to eat. I get yeah, it. I see what you're I, I saying. I understood the first three times. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but no, I'm not going to do that. You know, and and that was just. But it, I mean, but, I don't think at that well. Point, well, the director himself said he goes, I've never had an actor tell me no, and I was like, well. Yeah, oh, now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. No. I just and I, I mean, and truly, I will do. I've done really profoundly humiliating, gross, like fake nudity kind of things. You know, like hung around a set in a dance belt, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically it's a, a skip, jock strap yeah, where it, the it, strap goes up your ass. It goes straight up your ass, yeah. and it looks it's flesh toned. Yes. So you look like a Ken doll. You look like a Ken doll. I, I did Party Monster. Yeah. So yes, there was a lot of that. Yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of that. Also, I used to be a dancer. So there you yes. go. Yeah. Well, there you go. I, I'm very good with the dance I only belt. wore them I'm great as, with the dance I belt. only wore them in situations where it was like, where it was like fake, you know, like pixelated nudity yeah, of yeah, me. Yeah. Which is always, which is like, it's, it's delving into prop humor, like my body being the prop, but you know, I, and I would, and I'll do that if yeah. it calls for it. If it, it works. But, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a time, cause we used to do it as a bit on the Conan show. And actually there's kind of like a, a bit that is, is, is well remembered of Conan and I we're in robes after the gym and he says like, Hey, there's a new, uh, steam room at NBC. It's like a prank or something. And he shoves me onto the today show set where Matt Lauer is, yeah, that's good. is teasing that's good something. That's and good, I end up sitting down, you know, but I'm, you're naked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm pixelated out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, it's a good. And bit. I mean, no, it's a good bit. And it's like, okay, that's a good bit. But after we did that bit a couple of times, when writers needed an ending to bits, it would be like, and then Andy I, and comes no, out Andy's naked. naked. And I had to be like, no, 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 no. That's a, that is a, that's like the alpha omega bomb in beneath the planet of the apes. You got to yes. save that for the big battle. <laughs> yeah. You can't just be firing that yes. thing off yeah, all yeah. the time. It loses its power. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I guess we're going to take another break uh, right now. Cause that's what we do on this show. Sorry about it, time guys. Time to sell shit. Yeah, time. I mean, not shit. Time, Excellent product. Time to make the fucking donuts. <laughs> hey, uh, Lord, we're back. So, uh, uh, Mr. Andy Richter, you have yes. to pick up your children soon. Yes, uh, oh, my your, daughter. Oh, your child, rather. My daughter, yeah. My son is my son is at college right now. He's going to uh, Parsons School of Design in New York City. Uh, is, he, is he going to uh, go do uh, uh, Project Runway one, no, one day? No, no, no. No, are you he, sure? Um, are you no, sure? Well, I don't... He's not like a clothing designer. He's a painter, and he's there for product design. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. He actually... Uh, he's going to be a graphic designer. Something, something like that's that. That's how you make money. I don't know. You paint. You do graphic design. Yeah. and You're gonna paint on the side. Well, I also could see him because he he likes clothes and he's into fashion, especially being an LA kid. You know, he's like he's you know <laughs> he's had friends with much richer parents that'll be like, "Do you want this eight hundred dollar cashmere sweater? My dad gave me six. And he's like, yes, I will yes, take that. Yeah, yes, yeah, I yeah. do. <laughs> um, so he's in, I mean, he does know a lot about clothes and fashion and design, but I could see him more, less designing clothes and more designing the campaign that goes around the clothes. Mean, graphic or the, design, Yeah, or the like store that. that, you know, yeah, or the graphics that go on or, the clothing. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Because every, every time I think Parsons, I always think of uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Heidi Klum When, when he whatever, got accepted yeah. there... Because I knew he had applied, and the, I, he's I'd the been next on the Tim tour. Gunn. Yeah. Well, I looked, I looked up, uh, I looked up Parsons like online and the, the graduates, and it's like everyone you can think of in fashion went there. Yes, you know, yeah. for a, a minute or two. But he it's also cute from the outside when you drive by. It's only drive by. I've never been on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah no, it's it's a, it, it's it's cute. Yeah, you think I should be more designer? But it's actually no. But it's cute though. Like the, yeah, all but, all of their all of their graphics on their like little. Uh, 
they're, they're in their window displays and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. it's great. They well, look you great. Could, you could go there too and just do fine art. And he had applied to different schools and was accepted to schools just uh, to be a painter, but he didn't want to. And when you go tour art schools and you are there for fine art, they go, oh yeah, when you come here, uh, you will be in a studio your whole life just painting the entire time you're at college. And my son heard that and was like, like fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't blame him. I, you know, he wants... A, to be around lots of different kids. He doesn't want to just be around art so, kids. So, yeah, cause honestly, sometimes when I, like, when I hear that, like, yeah. I'm actually kind of like, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, oh, wait, you mean put blinders on and just do what I do? Yeah. Like, th- there's something kind of neat but about he, that. That's but not no, he, him. He wants that's to be exposed. Yeah. yeah. He he wants a much more sort of, like, broad spectrum. He wants to meet other artists yes. and be exposed to other yes. art, art types. Because he's got, he, he's got tons of, he, he's a... Uh, Does he, he have an art type? Like, you know, like, I mean, you've probably seen his art. I mean, I'm going to assume that you've seen well, your son's art. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, well, he's, he's a, he really is an amazing painter, and I'd say that is it just an like impressionist kind of stuff no he does, he does he does he was do, he did a lot of portraiture he does amazing portraiture and i heard a couple of different you know because you you take a portfolio to these art schools yeah, of course. and then they have someone that evaluate them and i heard at least three times people say well you know how to move paint around the canvas very well which is like, oh, okay. Yeah, great. Um, like, yeah. But he... Oh, so uh, he's like painting like shuffleboard. I don't know. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. just like, that's something that I guess is like... No, I mean, it's, it's a saying. Yeah. I, I, I paint and it's a saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like, no, but, but also, he, that means it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah, but yeah. he... But I mean, from an early it, it's age... Kind of, it's kind of a... It's semi-backhanded, but it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, well, and... But he did a bunch of portraiture that people really were kind of Has he ever done by. you? Mm, yes, he did me and my wife from an old picture of us on our wedding day. Hmm. Um, yeah, in lots of grays and purples. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. No, it's not. It's a really. It's, a, it's, it's all really, black and brown. It's a, really, it's a really nice painting. And like he did a picture. It's shit brown. Yeah, he hasn't done a lot of. I mean, he d- he's done a lot of life drawing. And uh, but he hasn't done a lot of portraiture lately. He ended up doing does he still life. I mean, or his, his senior abstract? year he started doing abstractions. Yeah, and he started doing a lot of layered paint that he would then sand levels off. Fun. So that it was like kind of it would create this sort of three dimensional kind of Fun. quality, and you know, and like I'd love to see a, it. a really personal kind. Of, I got a I got a portfolio on yeah, my phone. I can show you after exactly. we're done. I would love that. But um, like you know, like a lot of stuff just about like personal stuff that he's going through you know like like you know he's girlfriend cool stuff he's, well no and, like uh, <laughs> well boyfriend stuff because he's gay so oh, uh, yeah, at yeah. a boy um but <laughs> at a boy way to be gay yeah. uh but he uh his timing is great <laughs> there's just there's just stuff there's just stuff like like he does it you know he did a couple paintings about being worried that the world won't outlast him like they're you know kids yeah. that young have that shit. I, my yeah, daughter, we're, my daughter generation. calls me. Yeah, my daughter calls me crying because she thinks she sees an article about like, well, human life will not sustain yeah. for another fifty years. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, the the all all everything's going to melt. Yeah, and you know, when yeah. I was a kid, it was like we're all going to fall bomb. into the sea. It was like get under your desk in case yeah, there's yeah. a nuclear Duck and bomb. Cover. I mean, yeah, or the the whatever that there was a TV uh, miniseries about like the day after. The day after. Or, That's that exactly what, it, what it is. With yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it was terrifying to yeah. us, you know, mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. like the threat of nuclear war. They literally, uh, and it's a lot more. It's actually like a lot more Gutenberg's concrete in that. thing. <laughs> oh, is he? Gutenberg's is he in that? totally oh, in that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a lot more concrete thing to worry about, you know, uh, Miami being gone, mm-hmm. you know, or New York City being underwater to, yeah. you know, 57 Street. No, the world's going to sink and we're all going to sink with yeah. it kind of thing. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. 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 It, and there's going to, the and thing. it's, you know, and you just think about like the displacement of poor people and, Food shortages and fresh water shortages. You know, it's like uh, well, India's running out of water. No, South Africa is running out of yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, Like, they're literally running out yeah. of water. And wh- <laughs> but it's okay. Look, look. What the fuck are you going to do? There, there's two things you can do about that, or you can think about that. Is uh, um, One, I don't live in South Africa. And two, I'll be long <laughs> dead before all of this stuff goes wrong. So it's yeah. totally, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, that's it's like fine. That, that little shit Ben Shapiro said when somebody was complaining about, uh, about like global warming will actually swallow up, uh, you know, lots of shore properties. Like, well, people can just sell them, but it's like, 
to whom? <laughs> to, to, to manatees? You so, know, like... So I knew a young lady. Uh, um, uh, uh, well, uh, boastful. Yeah. Oh, hmm. thank you. Well, I'm, I'm being I'm being nice about it. I understand. So I, I, but no, I knew a young lady, and uh, her family owned two floors of the Dakota oh, in wow. New York. Yeah, it's like one of those apartments is worth like twelve million dollars. Right, exactly. So it's like they own two floors of it. Um, and this is like back when the Dakota was the Dakota, essentially yeah. when it was like there was nothing around it. Yeah, literally, like like the, the the place next door was a tennis court. Yeah, because like yeah, it was just there was nothing. It was around kind it. of a shitty neighborhood, actually. Well, a little bit the, shitty. The reason why it's called the Dakota because it was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Yeah. So like yeah, you look at it, the Central Park across the street, and then just everything else is just wheat fields, you mm-hmm. know, kind of thing. So uh, they bought it back then, and uh, but they decided to sell their two floors of the Dakota. Uh, to buy property in Nevada because California was about to sink into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was that? Oh, I mean, this is two generations ago. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but it, it, it's one of those families where it's like a lot of could have beens kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And, but you know what? They own property in Nevada. Yeah. yeah. But I mean in Las Vegas or in the middle no, of nowhere? No, no, no. In Podunk, Nevada. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. That would be expensive. Right, right. <laughs> that would be worth something. Yeah, yeah. That would totally be worth something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, honestly, they had the Lex Luthor plan from Superman 1. It was like, yeah, like I'm going to sink California. Yeah, and get yeah. Like a, which is actually, when you think about Superman 1, really, like Lex Luthor's like devious plan was yeah. to literally just, it's a real estate scam. I'm going to sink California. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, when California sinks, all of Cal, it's not like the it's not like the default line knows the state line. It'll just drop yeah. off in front of the mountains. No, no, you know? no. So like Bakersfield will be beachfront. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no. I, I'm pretty sure Lex Luthor has it right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I God, know. I wish I could. I wish you people could see how angry he looks. <laughs> no, Lex Luthor knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, he's so his my, face is red. My, my veins ex, are popping. My ex girlfriend's family knows what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they still own the property. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's lots of you know. Apparently, there's lots of uh, billionaires that are buying up like tons of New Zealand real estate, which is, it's really hard. Like I remember once, and this is so name droppy, but it's the kind of thing that I can say because of my job. Is it George Clooney? No, Uh, it's David Bowie. Once, once on the Conan show, because David Bowie was on the Conan show because he was a local. He was actually somebody you could get on short notice and he was absolutely lovely. That was it was one of the he's best the things most that lovely ever. Person. Oh my goodness. He yeah. was so great and I, and he's one of those people that I was nervous about because he mattered to mm-hmm. me. And I have met people that yeah. mattered and I'm bummed. Yeah. So I learned like don't talk too much to people that matter to you who are famous and Yeah, big. don't talk to P. Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yours, not yeah, necessarily he mine. Matters. Well, actually, um, well, uh, Bowie was my musical guest on uh, SNL. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, that's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Or how young you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's, but if you feel old. How young you were. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But he, uh, he said to me, I asked him, like, what citizenship he had. And this isn't a commercial break, chatting. And he said, oh, actually, he said, I am uh, a citizen of Bermuda. He said, for tax purposes. Taxes, yeah. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute, because I had been to Bermuda, and I was like, wait, I didn't think that you could be a Bermudan unless you had like family that was Bermudan, and you couldn't purchase property unless you had, you know, like some sort of your. And he's like, if you have money, you can yeah. be a citizen of Bermuda. Yes. I was like, oh, yes. okay, I if see. You have, yeah, if you have the Ziggy Stardust yes. money, okay, yeah. And and it's the same thing with New Zealand. New Zealand is a very hard place to emigrate to, but if the you're ZDM, like the Ziggy yeah, Stardust if you're, money, yeah. if you're if you're P did or not P Diddy, if you're Peter Thiel, you can you can buy places that you know. If oh, you're absolutely. A, if you're a you know a, a Silicon Valley gazillionaire, like yeah, that's your that's your that's your escape pod. Oh yes, is the, New Zealand. The, there's a building in Dover, Delaware, where it's literally just a PO box, and it's a company that will handle all your kind of stuff. Oh yeah, it's a tax shelter in the United States. Yes, yeah. Thing. No, that's if you incorporate in Delaware. There, it's like a lot of people do that. Just yeah. yeah. It, 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 what it is is it's like let's say you own Coca Cola. Yeah. Right. So what you're doing is you have Coca Cola uh, wherever you're doing Coca Cola. Yeah. But you're licensing it through Delaware. Yeah. 
and that's what it is. So essentially, like, let's say you, you know, make a billion dollars, you're licensing your name for ninety nine point nine 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 million dollars. Yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. Like, yeah. And next thing you know, you're paying taxes on a thousand dollars. Yeah. And that's how they do it. Yeah, yeah. And Bermuda's one of those. What's the other one? It's not the Virgin Islands. Uh, the Cayman. The Caymans. Yeah. The Cayman Caymans. Islands, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. No, it's, tax yeah, dodge. Was, so yeah, no, I mean, yeah, no, Bowie got to that, into that nine figure kind of range yeah, where yeah. they can do that. Like, yeah, no, I, I can't yeah. do that. Bunny ears were not that successful. No. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, no, I, do, Dover, here we come. Yeah. Uh, gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's funny how, like, I don't know if you've ever, people have sent it to me. I never went, I honestly never went looking for it, but there's like celebrity net worth things. So and, when you type in any celebrity's name, the first thing that comes up afterward is net worth. Yes. You type in my name, I, I type in your name, it's literally going yeah. to autocomplete net worth. Yeah. And mine is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's like I have $10 million and it's like, I do not have $10 million. I have an apartment that can't even have a parrot in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't even have the dog I, I want. Have- I can't afford a parent sitter or a parrot sitter. Oh, it says you have fifteen million dollars. Oh, dude. I have fifteen million dollars now. I made yes. five million dollars. Fist bump. All right. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I go. don't. People, I do not have fifteen million dollars. I do not. The show I'm on yeah. just got cut in half. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. No. I. Uh, I don't know where they get that fucking number, but I mean, it's you know. Oh, we're exactly dude. we we're worth the same amount Double of money. Fist bump. Oh my god! Yeah. Congratulations to the fifteen million club. We did it. Oh, uh, that's a relief. Uh, I know you're All as right. successful as Macaulay yeah. Culkin, dude. I'm gonna buy a boat on the way home. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some New Zealand real estate yeah, on the yeah. way home. I'm going to Dover, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, we should probably wrap it up because I know you have to pick up your kids. And yeah, like and we're actually kind of running over. Cause but we... it, this is really fun. Thank you so much for having me in your lovely home. Oh, thank you. I it... don't know if you tell people that that's where you record this, but yes, it's yes. in your lovely home. Actually, the first time I've recorded in my lovely office. Oh, nice. Actually, I cleaned it up pretty much specifically for you. Just for me? Pretty much. I mean, look, I I'm a you, dirt I, bag. You well, should have left it shitty. Honestly, I'm a dirt bag too. And I, my lady, I love it because it's the one room where I'm allowed to be a dirt bag. <laughs> but uh, no, I cleaned up because also I want Nacho to be able to walk around everywhere yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So. Yeah, the bird is in this room. This is the bird's room. Yeah, so. is, honestly, it's more the bird's room than mine now. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. But uh, um, but yeah. He's, right, he's, he's right, back right, in, the he's in the cage. He's in the cage. He's in the cage. Um. So you know, thank you for coming. And also, I know, I know, Nacho. Like he loved, he loved sitting on his shoulder so much. He shit on it. Yeah, he, I did get shit on while we were. Yeah. You know, most podcasts I do get shit on at you know, some point. Yeah, honestly, you're only the third guest that got shit on oh, during this whole thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This and the only one by a bird. The yeah, rest were you. Yeah, yeah, believe me, I, I, I've done a Cleveland steamer or two on a guest. <laughs> but you know, you know what? You know what, listeners? Guess who? Yeah, there you go. Uh, um, thank you so much, dude. Thank you for Mac. doing this. This is great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I need a filler anyway. So uh, thanks for filling in. Sure, no problem. Wait, I don't get it. <laughs> thanks much, brother. All right, bye. <laughs> We're always getting voicemails. <laughs> you dial 845 Easy E, your hopes. I said it's 845 Easy E, your hopes. It might sound dumb, but it's not a joke. It's 845 Easy E, hopes. That's 845-393-4629. Motherfucking hoax. Yo, Michael F. E. Klucklin. I saw you at the grocery store. You were on a magazine that said, Macaulay's untold secret. What kind of secret, Macaulay, are you keeping from us? Great. This is May from All Green. Uh, the cargo is not on board yet, so I email to Taiwan, find out what's the problem, then we let you know by tomorrow, okay? Thank you. Hey, Macaulay Culkin. I just wanted to say fuck you for the stupid Home Alone game that I played on the regular NES when I was a kid. I cannot beat that fucking shit. Find me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. You are freaking lunatic! Oh my god. Let's kung fu!